All right, let us pray. Father God, we thank you once again for another great day that you have uh, given us, oh God. We thank you for uh, just taking us through this week, God, for giving us the strength to go through this week, for giving us the mindset, oh God, to face um, all the difficulties and all the challenges that are uh, put before us. And God, we just thank you for giving us the energy and strength to keep uh, moving on. And now we just pray that you open our hearts and minds and cause us to receive a word that will empower us, a word that will help us uh, to continue to grow, to continue to reach that level of success, and that word that will uh, continue to help our faith grow to understand and know that we can do all things through Christ. And now, God, we uh, pray for these young people. We pray that you continue to uh, bless and anoint them, oh God, and help them to be the ones that stand out and the ones that stand up for you and let everybody else know that Jesus is real and God is on the throne. We give you honor, we give you praise, and we give you glory. This and all of the blessings we ask in Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. Uh, this morning we are going to uh, be just talking about some points that we've been uh, hitting uh, since we started the mindset um, techniques about eight weeks ago. Uh, we're going to be looking at some important um, skills and points that will help you to uh, continue that role of success. And so I know um, you guys, this is like your third time, I think. Second time. Second, third. third. Okay. All right. And so these are just points that we uh, are going to be um, revisiting things that we talked about and we'll start another class in a couple of weeks because next week we'll go at next Sunday we'll go ahead and end um, the unit four and then we'll start it back over okay so we're going to be talking about some uh, main points that we hit in mindsets the main points that and topics that um, and goals that we're trying to achieve when we talk about the um, mindset program all right so one of the things that we uh, one of the things that, that we started out saying is with mindset we start with the concept that we believe everybody can learn. You know, that was always one of my philosophies as an educator is that I believe that everybody could learn. Now I taught uh, my first year I taught uh, just you know regular ed students but my second year you know I was asked to um, teach a group of students that had some um, disabilities and most of the disabilities were behavior disabilities I had um, some autistic students that um, you know um, some had a, a, a some minor uh, learning disabilities and also they have the behavior things and so because my philosophy is that everybody can learn. It caused me to go into that classroom with a uh, motivated mentality to know that uh, these kids are going to do great things. All right. Now the numbers. When you talk about a classroom like that, the numbers nationwide say that only 25% of those students graduate from um, high school. But I like to brag about the numbers that I had, you know, while I was teaching. At least 75% of my students graduated from high school. You know, and that number, you know, because I still have a, a group, uh, my last um, teaching assignment, which was this past year, you know, I start working with third, fourth, and fifth grade. So it's going to be a while for those guys to uh, graduate. And then I have a few. Uh, the year before that I had some 6th, 7th, and 8th graders. So, you know, um, those numbers will have to bear out later on. But, um, according to the first five graduation classes that I've had, you know, at least 75% of my students um, graduated from high school. You know, and again, it all starts because we have to believe that everybody, uh, everybody can learn. You know, you may have heard that before, but um, some people don't believe that that's necessarily true. All right, you had a comment that you wanted to make. Okay. Yes. 
Um, before, before you had said that, before you had said that, um, you teach third, fourth, and fifth, so, but, so before you taught third, fourth, and fifth, you taught, um, high school? Middle school. Oh, high school. Yeah, and, uh, you know, high school as well. Yeah, but middle, uh, elementary school, this was my last year, that was the first time that I uh, tackled the elementary school level. Yeah. Because I, I knew um, that, you know, I knew that this was probably, you know, going to be the year that I leave or, you know, I, I thought I was going to maybe stay another year, you know. So things worked out for me and I was able to leave, you know, after um, this past year. Okay. So, yeah, I've taught on it all levels now. <laughs> so I know a little bit of something about, um, you know, the different generations that are coming up now. And then uh, we talked about last week, you guys uh, engaged with us when we were talking about the process of learning, you know, and how uh, the research shows us uh, that when we learn, our brain changes, okay? Uh, there are more connections. And we learn because we take on challenges, right? You know, easy stuff don't really help us uh, to grow. It doesn't help the brain grow because those are things that we already know about, right? Right? Okay. Yes. So, and we talked about that process of, of, of learning. And then we talked about how can we get smarter? How can you get smarter? Uh, let's go with you first. Like trying or working. Okay, trying, working. What else? You get smarter by paying attention in class. By paying attention in class. Those are all keys. Uh, you got to be able to work hard, and you definitely have to pay attention uh, to what's going on. So, you know, that's how we get smarter. Now, we went... In the beginning, we went to a uh, we went a little bit more technical than that because we studied the brain, and we saw that when we um, try and when we put forth effort, the neurons, which are cells in the brain, they make more connections. Okay, and we saw how that people that constantly try, constantly give effort, constantly um, um, you know persevere we see that their brain activity and the connections in their brain is far more greater than somebody that does not try real hard. Somebody that goes through life and want everything to be easy. Okay? Mm -hmm. And then we talked about some ways to, uh, the best ways to exercise our brain because the brain is like a muscle, right? And can anybody explain what I mean when I say that? The brain is like a muscle. Yeah, you first. Um, the brain is like a muscle probably because it grows and gets stronger. Okay, grows, gets stronger. It's always working. Right, okay. Okay, so both of y'all got a, a good idea. And we say the brain is like a muscle, like your sister said, it is, you know, um, when you lift weight and the more you lift, okay, the uh, more you build these muscles, right? But the key to it, though, is that I can't keep lifting the same amount of weight for a long period of time. See, like for me, you know, if I'm doing a certain weight for two weeks, guess what? That weight is getting way too easy for me, so I might have to put a little bit more on there because I have to have that resistance in order for my brain, uh, in order for my muscles to grow. And the brain is the same way. You know, you have to have those challenges in order for it uh, to grow. All right? None, none of y'all lift weights, right? You lift weights? Oh, wow. Wow. But have you ever, um, have you ever experienced that when you lift the same amount of weight for a long time? It gets a lot easier, right? Right? And then you stop. Your muscles start growing as well when you lift in the same weight. So some people do that because they just want to be maintain uh, the toneness that they have. Okay, they're not really trying to build any more muscle. You know, so they'll lift a uh, lighter weight. But if you're trying to build muscle, though, you have to keep increasing uh, the weight intensity. Yes, sir. I want to tell you something. Did you forget? 
Yesterday I got you a basketball group. Okay, okay. What what are you um you on a team? Well, it's like it's it's called basketball N and um it's David Allen, the um Okay. Yeah. Okay. And he's just and he's just like coaching me because there's already there's fifteen spots and they already know ten people can do it. So he's pushing me so I can be one of those five people that are on the team. Okay. Okay. Great. Great. Because that, that's how if you want to get better, you you know that's one of you already made the first major step. Is you have to be a part of a group, a part of a team, so that you can grow and um, learn the skills that you need and, and get better. Okay, now, uh, I want to ask you guys this question. Have you ever had any of these common problems that students in school have? I can't concentrate. It's really hard to focus on schoolwork. Yes. you have that one? Okay. Now, do you have any strategies that you use to help yourself overcome that? Sometimes my teacher, she lets me go and take a room at work. Okay, okay. Because, because some of the concentration problems that you have, is it because other students are talking loud or those kind of things? Yeah, something like that. Okay. Okay. So in, in getting to a quiet area, does that help you concentrate? Yes. Okay. I am too disorganized and I never have enough time. Okay. Good. Good. Because... For a lot of my students, uh, that's the main thing that we have to work on is organization. You know, because they will come into the classroom and it, number one, they won't have anything, paper, pencil, or anything. So how do you expect to uh, do great work if you're not prepared? You know, or when we're doing work, you know, they have stuff everywhere. You know, because in my classroom, I taught every subject: math, science, language arts and uh, social studies. So we're, because we're doing all these subjects, you know, they had to learn how to be organized so they could keep up with stuff. Because I had students that was, they were doing the work, but when it was time for them to turn it in, they couldn't find it. And that's because they just had, you know, stuff everywhere. So I had to teach them how to be organized, okay? I have trouble remembering things. Yes. Okay. Okay. Now, do you have a strategy to help you overcome that? Yes. I, when my teacher tells me to my, my teacher tells me to write it down so that I can, you know, go back and see it. Right. Right. Good. Good. Okay. Some subjects are really hard for me to learn. Okay. Good. Oh yeah. Go ahead. Okay. Okay. So, and and we talked about um, some of those strategies uh, that we were that we can use to help ourselves uh, get better. Okay. And we talked about attention. And, and concentration, just like you were saying, attention is like really like that that spotlight in your in your mind. You know, whenever you shine that spotlight on, that's what you learn. Okay, whatever we talked about that um, the first time y'all came in is how our brain perceives a lot of things. When we come into a new environment, our brain starts to perceive and pick up a lot of things, right? But how? Uh, but out of those things that our brain uh, picks up and perceives, it's a small fraction of that that we hold on to, right? And we can anybody remember what we call that? What type of memory is that? Short-term memory, or, uh, or what else do we call it? Working memory. Working memory, right? Right. So it's those things. Uh, that, that catches our attention, those are the things that automatically move to that uh, working memory. And just like you were saying, if we're not paying attention, 
then we can't move those things to permanent memory if we're not uh, paying attention. All right, so we got to be focused. Now, one of the things that we talked about this earlier, so I'm glad to, to revisit this, we have some strategies to help us to focus that spotlight, you know, how to pay attention and how to put things in that um, working memory, how to put things in that short-term memory. One of the uh, main uh, brain power things is food. Okay, anybody know the brain needs food? Why do you think the brain needs food? The brain needs food so that it can work better. Okay, so it can work better. Right. Okay, because the brain takes up about, you know, 33% of all the energy is consumed by the brain. Alright? And so, in order for our brain to use all that energy, we have to supply it with food. Okay? So, the bottom line is we have to be, hold that thought, the bottom line is we have to uh, be people that eat food that feeds the brain. And certain foods feed the brain, other foods don't. Do, can you um, think about some of the foods that may possibly feed the brain? Foods that help us to increase our um, concentration and attention. Mm, probably like fruits and veggies. Okay, um, some fruits. Yep, some fruits. Talking about some of the foods that help us um, concentrate better, that feeds the brain. This is a lot, but I can't believe I still remember this. The food that helps the brain is the eggs and peanuts. Right, absolutely. Eggs, peanuts are power, what we call brain food. You know, that's why I eat, matter of fact, I probably eat too many peanuts, but I eat a lot of peanuts. I, I replace things like, because uh, I, I had a passion, man, I had a love for these ice honey buns. You know, I loved them, man. And I, I would eat like three, four of those things a day, you know, because I just love the ice honey buns. But what I had to learn how to do is because the ice honey buns don't like me. <laughs> you know, I like them, but they don't like me because they do things to my body that my body says stop, right? So what I had to do is I had to replace um, the ice donuts, I, I, all, all the honey buns, I had to replace that with something that I thought was better. And the one thing that I chose was peanuts. You know, so when I have a, a need for a snack now, I give, me a, I give me some peanuts. You know, and peanuts feed the brain uh, eggs. You know, and I, yeah, yeah, just eggs, period. Eggs, period. And I love eggs. I do. I love them. Um, fish is another um, type of brain food. Okay, so we have to make sure, in order for us to increase our intention and concentration, we have to eat things like that. We have to eat healthy foods. Eggs, fish, um, uh, peanuts. You know, uh, fruit, you know, things like that will um, help our brain uh, to do better, to work better. Another thing that we have to be doing, and this is what kids, uh, uh, you, young people, this is what young people don't do and they don't take this serious. Sleep. Sleep. Yeah. 